Hey, welcome. It is the Dish Jackson Show. I'm Rusty Humphreys. I'm just your humble guy saying hi. This is the star of the show. She's Nisha Jackson. And, um, true, you know, I was listening to other doctor radio shows and yeah. stuff in a major city. You're so good. She's so good. <laughs> and you just got to tell your friends about her. She's, yeah, just, well. she's just, she's, she's awesome. And we sure appreciate you being here. Subscribe so you make sure that you don't miss any of the Nisha Jackson show. Uh, go to nishajackson.com and also onepeakmedical.com. So um, I'm feeling a little sad. Yeah. Um, it's January. What, is that something that everybody feels a little bit? Yeah. So not everybody, but some people are much more prone to a depression that is reoccurrent every year during the winter months. Huh. Yeah. So the reason why that is, is that the sunlight it changes, right? Right. So seasonal affective disorder, also known as the SAD syndrome, is something that's very real. I remember when I first started practicing medicine, I, um, there were, you know, many medical providers that didn't really believe in SAD, you know, it wasn't a real thing, but now it's actually a real diagnostic code, a medical diagnostic code that we use in the medical office to describe a depression that comes back every year. Hmm. And some people are very susceptible to it. And, and again, it's one of those um, depressions that's kind of a slow onset. And um, by the time we get well into winter, like, you know, by late January, you really feel bad. Is it generally in certain parts of the country, you know, Oregon, Washington State, the Midwest, but like in California, Arizona, it's not so bad? Exactly, okay. right. So the less sunlight you get, the more susceptible you are to this. Hmm. So the difference between New Hampshire and say Florida, you would be 74% more likely to get SAD in New Hampshire than you would in Florida. Okay. So that's a good example, yeah, right? It makes sense. So, yeah. so yes. Yeah, well, what so, do you do? Because you don't want to, everybody can't move. Right. <laughs> well, a lot of people are moving these days. Yeah. It's amazing to me. So, um, but the most important thing is to recognize that you're getting this every year. Like some people just put on a whole bunch of weight during the winter time because they eat more when they're depressed. Some people have more anxiety. Some people can't sleep in the winter months. Some people say their body is in constant pain during the winter and they think it's just because it's cold, mm -hmm. but it's really because they're depressed. Um, and, and, and so you have to recognize that you have this or let's say you get it and you're not sure you really have it, but you go on a vacation during the winter, maybe in December, you go on a vacation to Hawaii and all of a sudden you feel amazing. Hmm. It's probably not just because you're in Hawaii. It probably is because you're getting sun. Interesting. So it's, it's, it's kind of important to identify with the, with the symptoms of SAD. And that has a lot to do with your quality of sleep, your mood, your susceptibility to anxiety, your ability to concentrate, your ability to feel optimistic. So if you're noticing a pretty big change between summer and winter months in any one of those areas, you probably do have SAD. Hmm. And that's that's something that can be treated. Uh, you need to, you know, obviously it needs to be diagnosed. But many people can diagnose themselves with this and do some alternative things that might work before you have to resort to an antidepressant. So um, just knowing also where you live and how much sunlight you're getting can make a big difference. So one of the things that we do in our office that we think is very effective for SAD is number one, put them on higher doses of vitamin D. Now we're not talking a thousand units of vitamin D, international units, we're talking five to 10,000 international units of vitamin D. So in order to get your vitamin D level into an optimal treatment range, you have to use more than a thousand international units. And Rusty, I can't even tell you how many people take vitamin D and they're not taking enough. Hmm. Um, so if you want to affect, you want it to positively affect your mood and your immune system, you have to take more vitamin D. And most of us are vitamin D deficient yes. anyway. That's a big, big deal. That's yes. one of the things with COVID too, right? Correct? Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think that, uh, well, we know for sure that vitamin D optimally affects your immune system. You could just Google studies on vitamin D as it pertains to the immune system or the correlation between the two. And you will see there's been many, many, many studies done on how vitamin D optimizing your level will optimize your immune system. 
But anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about your and it mood. brings it all together. It brings, brings it, all, it together. all together. So vitamin D is the first thing we want to do with somebody that feels depressed during the winter mm -hmm. or feels like they're blue. And it's a different kind of depression than actual depression. It, you just you just feel blue. You feel just sad. So um, optimal doses of vitamin D. The other thing that we, we use is higher doses of B-complex. We know that B12 and B6 and B2 and B5 are very important for your mood. You have to have B vitamins in order to make the neuro brain chemicals in your brain that keep you from being depressed and anxious and also having excessive cravings and ability to focus. Those are all controlled by brain chemicals that come from B vitamins. Huh. So you need B vitamins in order to make the brain chemicals that keep you from being depressed. Is the best way for B vitamins, is that just a supplement, a pill? I know you guys do B shots at the clinic. Yes. So we do B shots at our clinic. Um, we also do um, nutrient IVs, but you can get this. You can you can get B vitamins at any health food store. I like the sublingual B vitamins. We sell them on our website. They're very um, they're highly absorbable. I've never seen anyone use these sublingual B drops. They're B complex drops and not have their B levels uh, rise in the blood. So they, they work very well and they're very highly absorbed. And that's one of the things that you've had at your clinic probably from the beginning, right? That's one of your favorite ones. Yeah, we've the, the B-complex drops, it's funny that you remember that. The B-complex drops that we use today are the exact same B drops that I used when I started my first clinic in 1994. Wow, Isn't that back wild? when you were 14. They just work. You know, why get rid of something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why get rid of something that, that, that works so well? Mm -hmm. um, now, there are light boxes that um, you can purchase. Costco's has them. You can buy them on Amazon. And the light boxes are really important because they create a light that's 20 times stronger than the sunlight, hmm. especially during the winter months. So you can put them on your desk. My daughter has one in her office. She turns it on because she gets a little bit down in the winter. And it's amazing how much that 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 helps her. It's just on the side, on her side desk, and it just it just points right at her head. And she notices a difference. And she notices a difference. Huh. And these things work really well. You just have to use them. Okay. We used to have light boxes that you would actually sit inside. So you would actually make an appointment, go sit inside of a light box. Mm -hmm. But that's really not necessary. You need about 20 minutes of this light box once or twice a day in order to get the same kind of an effect as you would get with the sun because you might not live in a sunny area. Right. So the light boxes are really important. Um, so 20 minutes uh, once or twice a day. And you can increase your time also. She has her light on most of the day when she's at work. It's not going to hurt you to have that. But you don't want to be doing it late at night. Because if you do it late at night, it's stimulating too much melatonin. And you really don't want you do you really don't want to have that much late at night. It confuses your brain as to what time it is, and it can interrupt your sleep. Well, and so, I'll tell you, her daughter is a pretty upbeat, uh, <laughs> uh, go get it kind of gal. So if it works for her, you might want to check it out. That's right. Yeah, it does. It does work really good. Um, and the other thing that I would say that's really important is just in addition to the vitamin D and in addition in addition to the light box really watch how much sugar you're taking in because sugar is a depressant. Alcohol is a depressant. A lot of alcoholic drinks have too much sugar, so then you have a combo of sugar and alcohol, both being a depressant, causing your seasonal affective disorder to be worse. Hmm. So excessive sugar intake leads to obesity. Obesity leads to more depression. So alcohol and sugar are not your friends when you have seasonal affective disorder. It will actually work against you and pretty quickly. So just think about the, the quality of food that you're eating and, and see how you can get more quality food in your diet that will help your mood. So that more Christmas vegetables. eggnog was probably not a good idea if you're having that. Probably not seven glasses of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe just a little tiny glass it's a of taste. it. taste, okay. The other thing that's really important for seasonal affective disorder is figuring out how to get good proteins in your diet. Many people who are vegans or very strict vegetarians that aren't getting any uh, meat in their diet, they're not getting fish, they're not getting essential proteins in their diet, um, not saying you can't be a vegetarian or a vegan, of course you can, but you have to be a responsible one where you're getting adequate amino acids in your diet. Amino acids come from uh, protein, and a protein is really important for stabilizing the brain chemicals to help prevent depression. Hmm. 
So you have to have some protein, whether it be vegetarian protein or animal protein, in order to make the brain chemicals that keep you from being anxious, depressed, or sad. Don't want to be sad. No. So these are some of the things that you can do to help seasonal affective disorder. But number one, just recognize that it's happening. You may be having it right now. And you also may be noticing that some of your behaviors, uh, meaning you're really becoming very negative, uh, you are noticing that you're not sleeping well at night, you're eating too much junk food, comfort food. Um, uh, comfort foods are usually not very good for you. No, okay, do you, is there a way to tell, you mentioned this earlier, um, that you know, instead of getting on antidepressants, because that's a different kind of a depression, can you tell the difference if you're just trying to self-diagnose yourself from being depressed that I need an antidepressant or depressed because I need sunlight? Yeah, well, I. so what I recommend first, I mean, usually once you, like in our office, we would identify what kind of depression it is. And certainly some depression should be treated, there's no question. Um, that's why we call a lot of the medications for depression and anxiety rescue meds because they really need to be rescued from a state that's not safe. So, so seasonal affective disorder comes and goes. It gets better with light. It gets better with some of these treatment modalities that I just mentioned. It goes away. Real depression, like chemical depression that really needs to be treated that's not helped by any of these other things is different. Okay. And so I would identify, is this coming and going? Is this something that gets worse in the winter months as, as the light starts to, to diminish and get better as I get into summer? That's true seasonal affective disorder. And sometimes that is treated with an antidepressant. I just prefer to try some of these other things first if it's not an emergency. Mm -hmm. Try some of these other things because often you will have the ability to avoid having to get on a medication that may have more side effects for you. Well, so, great? yeah, I well, think that's, that's, but if you have any question about that, seeing your medical provider and getting a true diagnosis, um, or maybe just trying some of these simple things. None of these things will hurt you and they're actually quite good for you to try and see you know, what happens over the course of a week or so. Well, one of the medical providers I would suggest is uh, Nisha Jackson, nishajackson.com. Also her great team at onepeakmedical.com. That's onepeakmedical.com. Uh, offices all over the place. Yes, yeah. and people fly in to see us. They'll fly in in the morning, have their blood work, and we'll go over the blood work in the late afternoon and, and get them all balanced, and then they fly out that night. They, they can fly in and fly out the same day if you don't live in Oregon, where most of our clinics are. I've done that. So you can too. So uh, again, uh, go to onepeakmedical.com. Hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss any of these Nisha Jackson shows. I'm telling you that right now. Uh, more great shows coming each and every week. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. We'll catch you next time. I'm Rusty Humphrey. She is Nisha Jackson. And this is the Nisha Jackson Show. Well, that was a double wave. That was That's how good of a show it was. Jazz hands. <laughs> it was a 10. 10. <laughs>